the team group T-Force Cardea Z440 has been officially launched in 2020, but it has been revised and it still is available for purchase right now. In this review, we have the latest revision in a 1TB variant, and we'll put it through the tests and see how it compares to other SSDs. The T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 is a PCIe Gen 4 x 4 M.2 SSD that is available right now in two storage variants, 1TB and 2TB. The 1TB variant featured in this review can be bought for 80 US dollars, a price that puts this SSD in the same price range as the Sabrent Rocket Gen 4 or the Crucial P3 Plus just to name a few. The design of the T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 is simple, as is the same case with many M.2 SSDs that do not have a custom heatsink included. The front part of the SSD has a copper and graphene layer label that is meant to passively cool the SSD if no heatsink is used. This has been a common thing for a few years now and it's a welcomed feature. However, the Cardia Z440 has a graphene label, which is supposed to be 9 degrees Celsius cooler overall. We shall see about that. The design of this label is nothing to write home about. It has a black background with dark copper graphics. Speaking of the graphics, the left side has the T-Force logo, while the right side has the Cardea name and the model of the SSD and various information about the SSD, such as the form factor, the pattern number, and so on. The back side of the SSD has another label. This time, this one is used to list the technical specifications of the SSD, the model number, warranty period, and so on. The controller used on the T-Force Cardea Zero Z for 41TB is made by Fison and it is the model PS5016-E16. This is an 8-channel controller that has been widely used in high-end SSDs, so we are having a good start with the Cardia Zero Z440. Speaking of a good start, this SSD uses two 512MB DDR4 RAM chips for its SLC cache. These DRAM chips are made by SK Hynix and are running at 2400 MHz by default. The memory chips of the T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 are made by Toshiba and are installed on both sides of the PCB. Each memory chip has a storage capacity of 250GB for a total of 1TB of storage space available. Before we test the SSD, it's worth pointing out that the included copper and graphene label is quite fragile. Even holding the SSD in your hand might bend it out of shape. This will not affect the performance of the label in any way, but it will put a dent into the looks of the SSD if that's what matters to you. The testing will be done on two platforms, one with the Intel Z390 platform and the other with the Intel Z690 platform. This way you get to see the differences in performance between PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0. We start our testing with Crystal Dismar 8. This is a popular benchmark that is widely used for all type of storage devices. It's kept updated. It's free and easy to use, and in this test, the team group T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 is placed on the 7th position when it comes to the reading speeds, right behind the Silicon Power P34 A80 1TB or the Crucial P5 1TB. When it comes to the writing speeds, the T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 comes up in the charts, up to the 4th position, with an average writing speed of 3300MBps being right behind the Sabrent Rocket Q for and the Silicon Power US 70. However, this is with the PCI 3.0 platform. What about the PCI 4.0? Well, things are different. The T-Force Cardia Z440 is right behind the Silicon Power US 70, with a writing speed of 5020 megabytes per second and a writing speed of 4300 megabytes per second. I have included these speeds into the same PCI 3.0 platform graphs to show you the actual performance differences. And with these two results, you can see the differences in performance quite easy. Moving on with the next test, which uses the Ato Disk Benchmark, another popular benchmark for storage devices. This one, however, uses more storage values and gets more results at the end. In this test, the T-Force Cardia Zero Z440 is on the fourth position on the reading tests, with an average reading speed of 3180 MBps, while on the writing test, the SSD moves down a few places, with an average writing speed of 3090 MBps. Overall, a good result for such an SSD, especially when compared to the high-end models offered by the competition. 
now that we are done with the synthetic benchmarks, we can move on with a video game test. In this case, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080p with all settings turned to their maximum. This game is created to measure the performance of the SSD as it is consistent when it comes to the usage of a storage device. And in this test, the TeForce Cardia Zero Z440 only needed 20.2 seconds to load the game level, matching the performance of the Silicon Power XS71 terabyte. When it comes to Windows file copy tests, it's easy, we just duplicate a folder on the SSD. This folder has a total file size of 100GB. At the start of the file copy process, the speed starts off really well at over 3GB per second, however, once the cache is filled, the speed will drop and stabilize at 1.5GB per second. Even so, a great thing to see, especially when we talk about a file copy or a file transfer that has a total size of 100GB. And when we compare the average file copy speed with other SSDs, we can see that the TeForce Cardia Zero C440 is on the fifth position, right behind the Silicon Power US 71 terabyte. However, the SSD is ahead of the Sabrent Rocket Q4 2 terabyte and the Crucial P5 1 terabyte. A good result overall. The final test is more as an observation, and here we get to talk about the temperature of the SSD when we push it to its limits. And while a synthetic benchmark is running and with no aftermarket heatsink installed, the TeForce Cardia Zero Z440 reached a maximum temperature of 73 degrees Celsius with a synthetic benchmark running, and 68 degrees Celsius with a video game running. It could have been better of course, especially with the advertised graphene label. Looking at the results, it's clear that the team group TeForce Cardia Zero Z440 is a good choice for both PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0 platforms. Using the latter means that you will get the full performance of this SSD, but even with a PCIe 3.0 system, you will get a good performance out of the drive. The great thing to see with the TeForce Cardia Zero Z440 is the consistency in the speed, regardless of the test used, and especially when you copy large files. Sure, there are fastest SSDs out there, but not many will manage a constant 1.5 GB per second speeds for the entire file transfer. So when looking at the raw performance of the TeForce Cardia Zero Z440, it's worth a buy, especially when we are talking about 80 US dollars for the 1 terabyte model. Yes, there are other SSDs that will perform close and be in this price range, but not many will be able to handle large file transfers the way this SSD does. However, if there's one issue with this SSD is the cooling. While the graphene label does help somewhat, it's not enough to keep such an SSD cool, especially if your system has poor ventilation. Thus, to be on the safe side, please use a dedicated heatsink with this SSD. It will only help you get the desired performance. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more, and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and Substarbstar pages of this channel.